Just a couple of videos ago, I created a complete guide on luminosity masks, how to use it, what to do with it, how to work with it. Now, looking at the title of this video, you might be thinking this guide changes color faster than a chameleon. But here's the thing. Remember the time that we learned photography. We learned manual focus, right? How to focus something manually by using the ring. We also learned autofocus, different autofocus modes, autofocus points and autofocus areas and stuff. And most of the time, when it comes to still photography, we use autofocus. Do we use manual focus? Very rarely, right? Does that mean that we forget manual focus? No, because manual focus is the basis, is the fundamental. You need to understand manual focus to be able to use autofocus and switch back to manual focus when autofocus doesn't work for you. Same as with luminosity masks. So for you to be able to not use luminosity masks, you need to understand what is luminosity masks, how to use it. So I insist you that you first watch this video to have a better understanding of luminosity masks because that is the basis, that is the fundamental. So today I'm going to show you why you do not need luminosity masks in most cases. And I underline in most cases and show you an alternative method which is much more non-destructive and better most times. Now, it comes with limitations. Luminosity masks also comes with limitations. So we're going to be talking about the limitations of luminosity masks and this alternative method so you can be the better judge. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and as always, if you want to download this photo and follow along, make sure to go ahead and check the links in the description. So just a quick little recap. What is luminosity masks? Luminosity and masks. Luminosity means brightness. Masks determines which areas of the layer hides or shows up. It can be a layer, it can be a filter, it can be an adjustment. Okay. So luminosity masks are the masks which are based on brightness levels, okay? So if your sky is bright and if you say, hey, Photoshop, select everything which is bright, okay? Brighter than this particular level. So it will select the sky and then you can darken it or maybe increase the saturation of the sky, so on and so forth. It creates a mask based on the brightness levels. Now, what does a mask do? Mask simply hides or shows up particular areas of the layer. Let me just quickly illustrate to bring you back the memories of that previous tutorial. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to fill the sky with say red, so what would I do? Create a solid color adjustment layer. But before that, first we need to select the sky. How do we do that? We can do that in a lot of ways. So I'll show you one way. Select color range and we'll select say highlights and then we'll move the range to see, decrease the fuzziness and we'll move the range to see when most of the sky is selected. There we go, most of the sky is selected. Click OK, increase the fuzz in just a little bit. OK, now we have most of the sky selected. Now if we go ahead, create a solid color adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and solid color, we choose red. Have a look, all of the sky is filled with red. Now this is a mask created based on brightness levels. So the bright areas are shown and the dark areas are not shown. So, and that's the concept of mask. If you look at the mask, if I make the mask visible, you can do that by holding the alter option and clicking on the mask, this shows you the mask. So white are the areas where the layer shows up, black are the areas where the layer doesn't show up or it hides. So these are the bright areas and we created a mask based on brightness levels. So the reds show up here and here. Now we can modify it. We can take the brush and just erase this particular area by painting that with black. So this area won't show up. We can just show the original layer by holding the alter option and clicking on it again. We can just erase this area and there we go. We have the sky red. We didn't mess up a little bit here, but you get the idea. Now, if you wanted to play with the mask with respect to brightness levels, you cannot do it. It's already done, it's fixed. Of course, you can open the mask and you can just uh, modify it, but you cannot get the sliders back, right? So if you wanted, let's just control a command D, deselect that, and let's just go to select color range. Now, here you get the sliders, right? If you want to get the sliders back after creating the mask, you just cannot. 
Now here comes the alternative method which is really really cool. For that, let us first create this mask and let us understand that method. Let's uncover that method. Okay, so click OK, created a solid color adjustment layer and red OK. There we go. We'll show the practical examples later in the video so wait for that. Okay, now have a look at this. Let's understand this. We targeted the bright areas of the photo. Okay, we targeted the bright areas of the photo. Okay, now this layer is hidden in the areas which are darker in the underlying layer. Can you guess where I'm getting with this? Okay, first we targeted the bright areas of the image. Second, this layer, this red layer is hidden in the areas which are darker in the underlying layer or the layer which is beneath it. So these areas are darker in this layer. So we hid those areas from this red layer. And we can also delete the darker areas of the underlying layer from the current layer using, guess what? Blend if, right? Now, let's go ahead and delete the mask. So if we select the mask and just delete it, delete layer mask, let's delete it. Now, watch. If I double click on the right hand side of the layer or right click and go to blending options, it will open up the layer styles dialog box. And the blend if does exactly the same. Plus, it's non-destructive. You can control that. Have a look. If I take this slider of the underlying layer from left to right, what it is actually doing, it's deleting the dark areas of the underlying layer, this underlying layer, the combined layers, the combined effect of the layers which are beneath it. In this case, we just have one layer of the underlying layer from this layer. Again, by taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right, we are deleting the pixels from the current layer of the areas which are darker in the underlying layer. In this case, the background layer. Getting it? Okay, if you do it, you'll get it. So, there we go. We get the exact same thing. Now, you want fuzziness, right? You can get that too. Hold the alter option, click on it, and just separate it. You get that softness and the fuzziness that you were looking for, and it is the same. Click OK. Done. And if you want to play with it, you can just double click on the right hand side of the layer again, and you can even play with it if you want. It's cool, isn't it? Now, you can also do midtones and highlights if you want to target the dark areas. Take this slider, it does just the opposite. If you want to target the midtones, take both the sliders. There you go, it affects the midtones. Now, let me show you some practical examples of the same. We will never fill skies with red, will we? Anyway, so let's go ahead and click cancel and let's delete this red solid color adjustment layer and create a curves adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves. Now, let's darken the skies a little bit. So we'll take the slider, we'll take it down. Okay, now the skies look a little nice, but this gets a little darker. We want to target just the sky. So have a look before after. Now, double click on the right hand side of the layer or right click and choose blending options. Now in that, you can see real time which areas are being affected. So you can play with it. There we go, just like that. Kaboom, magic, <laughs> done. And you can play with the fuzziness, alt, Hold the Alter or Option if you're using a Mac and click on this and just you can play with it if you want and click OK and you can see real time what the heck is happening. And as you can see, this area is also darkened. So before, after. So we want to lighten this area up. We don't want this layer to affect this path. So we can play with the mask. Take the brush, select the mask, make sure the foreground color is black and then just simply paint here. And it's done. Have a look. Before, after. Perfect selection of the sky. Now, let me show you what else you can do with it. You can also create another curves adjustment layer and maybe brighten that up. And suppose you just wanted to target the grass, increase the contrast maybe a little bit. 
and leave it stuff just like this. It looks fine. And double click on the right hand side of the layer and take the slider because we don't want to affect the sky here. We might want a little bit of softness. So hold the older option, click on in here and just play. Look, it's looking strange over there. So you want to make this a little softened. There we go. Just like that. Okay. If this area bugs you, you can play with the mask and solve this. Click OK and select the mask. Take the brush, make sure it's black, foreground color, and just paint over this area and that will be fine. There you go. Done. Have a look at the before and after so it's still processing. Again, don't ask me which laptop is this. This is a shitty laptop. But it has all the ports, so it's good for the workflow. Anyway, so have a look before, after. It looks really nice. Now let me show you some limitations of the same. Now I already showed you the limitations of luminosity masks and it is you cannot play with the sliders. You just cannot change the brightness levels it's affecting. In this we have a lot of limitations. Two limitations mostly. It will not disturb you but sometimes it might. So let's delete both of them. Let's come back to the red solid color adjustment layer and that's just for demonstration. So we will create a solid color adjustment layer. Red and double click in here and there we go. We did exactly the same. Now it looks good. Now let's zoom in quite a bit and let's understand this. Now have a look at the edges. It's quite a little sharp so we want to make it a little smoother. So we'll start here. Hold the older option. Click on in here and just play with it. Now it's smooth. It looks nice. Now once we make it smooth, have a look. These areas are also getting selected. So click OK. We want to fill this area with solid red. But here's the problem. There is no mask in here. You cannot add to the mask. You cannot, you just cannot add to the mask. Right? Now, if you had created a luminosity mask, so I'll do that again. Let's just go ahead and select color range. Okay. And then do the same thing. And we'll show the preview this time with quick mask or, okay, there we go. We'll show the preview. Now it's kind of opposite. So visible are the areas which are being targeted. So if we make it a little smoother, as you can see, if I zoom out, if I increase or decrease the range, probably increase it. See, these areas are being affected. Okay. You can look here in the mask, click OK. And you create a solid color adjustment layer with red selected. Okay. There we go. Now you do have a mask. You do have a mask. You can select the mask. Maybe hold alter option, click on in the mask and you can modify this. Take the brush, make sure the foreground color is white and you can just make the sky super solid so that it affects every inch of the sky. Now I did a little bit of extra there, but you get the idea. Okay. Let me do that properly. Okay. Just like this. And you can just be a little careful right over there, but we did it. We can modify this. We can add to the mask. In that case, we can just remove from the mask. Okay. Now it's perfect. If I hold the alter option, click on in here again. So it's perfect. We can just adjust its area later. You get the idea, but that's the limitation. One more limitation is suppose I wanted to increase the vibrance of the sky or the saturation of the sky. So I will click on this adjustment layer icon and choose vibrance. Okay. I'll increase the vibrance since I've already created the luminosity mask. I can just go ahead, hold the alt or option, click on in here and drag it to the top. Replace layer mask. Yes. And there you go. It copies the mask for that area. Now you can play with the vibrance. You can just play with the saturation. So there are two limitations of this method. You cannot copy around masks. That's number one, right? In this case, simply if you wanted to add more effects to a particular area, you don't have to create the mask all over again, which you have already created. You just can copy it over. Second, you cannot add to the mask. Okay. So, but in most cases you don't want it, but of course I said most cases, some cases you might want. So simply you can go ahead. Let me show you some practical examples. As I already showed you, darken it, then double click on the right hand side of the layer. Just play with it. It looks fine. You can do a little bit of softening there. Okay. Now create another curves adjustment layer. I'm doing it really quickly so that you get the idea what you can do and how fast this is. Okay. There you go. And double click on the right hand side of the layer and do it from the right hand side. Just like that. It okay. 
play with it. And we didn't want this area to be affected. We'll select this mask and take the brush, paint this area in white. There we go. And probably I'll select here. This area look a little strange, so I'll just have to play with it again. See, that's the non-destructive advantage we get. So we'll move it a little up and you might have to deal with the skies a little bit, but that's okay. Okay, you get the idea. And after adding all of that, maybe a little bit of vibrance to the sky and maybe some color lookup tables. So click on in here and choose color lookup. And there's a lot of stuff that you can add foggy night. It looks really cool and you can just decrease the opacity and you can add some film stocks too. maybe Kodak this one. It looks nice also, so you can decrease the opacity, maybe increase it depending upon your taste. At this point, you might want to darken the sky. So look at the layer which darkens the sky and darken it even more like that. And you can just decrease the saturation. That's too much. And this is the final result that I got with this image. So that's the reason why you do not need luminosity masks in most cases. And I underline and I'll say that again in most cases. So what are the limitations of luminosity mask? You cannot adjust the brightness levels that it is affecting real time. Once you have said that, it's set. And what is the limitation of this alternative blend if method? You cannot copy masks because there are no masks. And second limitation is you cannot add to the mask because Again, there is no mask. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing. I'll see you guys in my next one. See you guys in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.